What is up guys? It's your boy, Mameloy, back with another video. On today's video, we are finally there. We have finally gotten all the way to the end, covering the bench press today, and what, what's up, man? What are you, uh, what are you doing here? What the f*** do you think you're doing? I'm just finishing the series, dude. What's, uh, what's up? Bench press? Really? Remind me, when's the last time you benched? I mean, it's, it's certainly been a while. I've been focusing on strongman, but uh, I, I still know how to do it. Four months it's been. And you're gonna teach these people how to bench? So it's been a while since I benched, so what? You trying to say you could bench better than me? You are me. <laughs> Look, another thing you can't explain. I'm subconscious, you asshole. What do you think I do all day in that head of yours? Seven days a week, bench. Two times a day, bench. Three hours a session, bench. I didn't, I didn't know that's what you were doing all day. <laughs> no, you didn't. Now give me the camera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I can still handle the video. I got this. Give me the camera. Bro, chill. We're, we're good. You're starting to scare me a little bit. You can, you can do. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Just go to sleep. What is up, guys? It's your boy, Mameloy, back with another video, and today. We're covering the bench press. So a little different from the format I've been doing for the top three tips videos. We're still gonna do three tips, but there'll be broader categories so you get a bit more bang for your buck on this video. We're gonna cover setup, the bar path for the bench press, and I'll finish off with some extra tips that I think will really help get your bench trending in the upwards direction. That being said, we're diving right into it with our bench setup. If you've noticed any pattern at all with these top three tips videos, it's that I always go over your setup for the movement itself. And with bench, that is no different. Your setup is always the most crucial part and will determine if you're going to succeed or fail right out the gate with your lifts. Bench press always gets that bad rap for being a bro movement, but when done correctly, it should be a total body effort and every piece of your body should be tight and contributing to your press. This isn't your bed at home that you're lying down into for a comfortable night's sleep at home. With the bench press, you should be in an uncomfortable position right out the gate, nice and tight, and this all happens before you even unrack the barbell. So we're just gonna go top to bottom for how you can get as tight as possible with your bench press. More important, however, once you've determined grip width for yourself, is where you are situating that barbell in your hand. This is often something that's overlooked, but it's rather important for helping you maintain your wrist position throughout the movement. We wanna be shooting for getting that barbell as deep down into the base of our palm as we can get it, as opposed to taking it into the meat of our palm. The reason for this is when we set this bar into the base of our palm, we're effectively stacking the bar over the wrist joint so we're now having a proper transfer of power from our wrist into the bar, and we're avoiding a nasty little moment arm at our wrist. What tends to happen when the bar is situated in the meat of your palm is you'll tend to go into that wrist extension position. This creates a tiny little moment arm that we have to overcome, making the movement harder. And I think we all can agree that after you've done a few reps of bench press with this wrist extension position, you don't really wanna bench anymore. Something you can look into to help out with this base of the palm position is called the bulldog grip, but that is something for another video. I'm not gonna cover it here. If you want to, go check that out. But that's the very top of our setup. So bar towards that base of palm, and wrist in a nice neutral position stacked over top of each other. Moving down the chain is something I think a lot more people are familiar with, and that is generating some upper back tightness. A strong back, and in particular strong lats, can be a big help to you in bench press, but they're not gonna do anything for you if you don't set them first, so let's go over it. Cueing for this is really straightforward. So all you're doing is taking your scapula, those winged bones in your back, and drawing them together, and then down. And you're thinking about this each and every time you go to bench press. So you think back and down every single time you go up to set it up. And when you have set it, you are making sure you are maintaining it throughout the entire movement. A lot of people will go to set it, they'll get really nice and tight, and then when they go to unrack and go for their first rep, they start to loosen up and forget about their back position, set it, and keep squeezing that position the entire time. And before you say it, yes, this is an uncomfortable position. We want that uncomfortable feeling. That is tightness 
and the tightness in turn generates power for us. So maintain that position as much as you can, squeeze it in as hard as you can. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but that's what's gonna help you lift more weight. Moving down this chain, we then have our core to set, and this is gonna be the same for our other big barbell movements where we're taking our big belly breath. So before we go for our rep, before that barbell even starts moving, we're taking in as much air as we possibly can down into our belly and then bracing against it. You are gonna think you are taking enough air in and I can guarantee you are not. So breathe in as much air as you possibly can and then some. Once you can't possibly take any more air into your belly, that's when you are bracing down and setting your brace for the movement. And what people like to think about this is think that someone was gonna punch you in the gut as hard as they possibly could and that's your brace. If you've done all this properly, you've effectively set your entire upper body up to be as tight as you can be. And we have one more piece of the puzzle to solve here, which is our legs, our lower body, and how we generate tightness here. Common logic would have you say, this is an upper body movement, what do I possibly need my legs for? And funnily enough, your legs are the things that will save you when everything else goes wrong. I'm not quite sure of the psychological reason behind it, but for a lot of people, when they start to fail a rep on bench press, they'll go into what I call the dead bug position, where they will immediately lift their feet up off the floor, and as soon as the feet leave contact with the floor, that bench is coming right back down on them. When you start to feel a bench press give on you, your first instinct should be to drive your feet into the ground as hard as you possibly can to generate as much force as you can. Ideally, you were doing this the whole time from the very start of your setup. So, just like we set up the whole upper body down to our core, we're setting up our lower body. So our quads, hammies, and glutes are all tight, and then our feet are driving into the ground. Now with your feet, you are driving into the ground in a manner that would slide you off the back end of the bench press, if that kind of makes sense. Pushing into the ground, and if the bench press weight wasn't holding you, and hopefully you have a good bench which is also creating friction to hold you, you would actually slide off the bench with how you are pushing into the ground. So the force you generate into the ground actually creates another force in the opposite direction. Cool thing is, with the direction we're pushing with our feet, the force that is going in the opposite direction is exactly where we want our bench to go. So if you've done all of this properly, you should have a super, super tight setup. There should not be a piece of your body that is loose. Everything should be contracting and everything should be helping you out with getting the weight up. That's your setup for the bench. Understanding the bar path is the next big step. Our path for the big four movements is essentially just where you need the bar to be in space to be in the most biomechanically advantageous position that is possible for you. I'm a big fan of working smarter and not harder and good bar path does exactly that for you. It makes the lift as easy as it possibly can be and who doesn't want that? Bench does have a bit of an oddball bar path to it though. The bar path going down in the movement is different than the bar path coming back out of the movement. Going down, the bar path is going to be a shallow little curve, starting over your shoulder joint, and then going down to around your nipple line, or right where your sternum and that dagger-like bone uh, in your chest. You've got some leeway with the bottom position, play around with it and see what feels comfortable. You should not be hitting and bouncing off your belly though. To help you further determine this bottom position, you should shoot for your forearms to be nice and parallel to each other. Should kind of look like a field goal at the bottom position. And then also, your elbow is gonna be slightly in front of the barbell. This will help ensure that you have selected the correct bottom position for yourself, and it will also make sure that your elbows are tucked properly and that your forearms are in the position where they're going to be able to generate the most amount of force for you. Now, like I said, the up portion of the lift does change a bit with bar path. Now it is going to be a straight line and is a straight diagonal line backwards. So starting at your bottom position, you're driving in a diagonal line backwards to back over your shoulder joint where you started the movement in the first place. A lot of people will tend to overextend when they hear this cue to drive backwards with the bar. You do not need this barbell ending up over your neck or face area. Just driving back to over your shoulder joint, that's your balance point for the movement. That's where you're starting and ending from. Really spend some time getting to understand setup and bar path for the bench press and quite honestly for all the other barbell movements that you're doing. It's really gonna save you time and energy in the gym 
and make sure you're working as efficiently as you possibly can be. That being said, I'm gonna finish out with some extra tidbits uh, where if you think you're already doing the setup properly and you think you already have bar path position on point, but your bench press still isn't going anywhere for you, I'm gonna give you some extra tidbits here to what I think really makes great bench pressers. First thing, and this is to all you lighter guys out there, myself included as a lightweight, you might have to gain some weight. This goes for strength training overall, but I'll see it way too often, and I got stuck in this when I was a bit younger as well. You wanna kind of maintain that aesthetic physique or that six pack that you have going, but you also want to drive up your bench press a whole bunch. Problem is, bench press does happen to be a very weight respondent lift, where if you do gain some weight, even if you're not training it all that much, it's probably gonna go up for you. So, if you combine gaining weight with proper programming, you're probably gonna see that that bench press starts to move again, especially if you've been maintaining a low body weight or a really lean body weight for yourself. But you gotta be able to make that decision for yourself, guys. Is the aesthetics more important to you or is that strength component more important to you? As a fellow lightweight, gaining weight is going to help you, so don't be afraid to kind of bite that bullet let the six pack go for a little while and build up your strength. Next piece of this would be that proper programming that I was talking about. And bench press is something that really benefits from a whole bunch of frequency. I kind of talked about this with the overhead press, but this is a movement where if you want it to go up, you gotta train it. You'd actually be surprised by how much frequency you can get in with bench press. High level athletes are able to train this four to five times a week at a higher intensity and be completely fine, be completely injury free and progressing themselves. This was something that was huge for my training when I first ever jumped from just two days a week of bench press to three days and then even four days. The increase in your strength is dramatic when you drive up that frequency. If you've never done it before, you'll probably feel sore, you'll probably question if it's gonna work, stick with it and stick with it for more than a month before bailing on it and I promise you will reap rewards from it. And then my last two little tidbits here, are learning leg drive and learning to be uncomfortable. I don't have enough time to fully cover leg drive in this video. I have done a video on my channel, but it is one of my older videos, so no promises there, I forget how it went. Alan Thrall does have a video on his channel though, and that's probably the most succinct description of leg drive that I've seen to date, so you can go check that video out as well. This is something that's kind of imperceptible when you're watching other bench pressers do their thing, but leg drive can easily add some serious pounds to your lift, and there are a whole bunch of bench pressers out there that without their leg drive, their bench press is actually rather weak. This is kind of the parallel to hip drive in the squat. Leg drive with bench press is an absolutely fantastic technique to learn. It can add some serious pounds to your bench press, so I definitely recommend after you've learned proper setup and proper bar path to add leg drive to your list. And then finally, you gotta be prepared to be uncomfortable. This is also advice that carries over to all of the main lifts. This starting position should induce some uncomfy feelings, maybe a tiny bit of painful feelings, but it's going to make your bench press better. Squeezing in as tight as you can and maintaining that squeeze the entire time is going to give you a dominant bench press as opposed to bailing out on it because it feels uncomfortable off the rip. You'll probably be setting up and claiming you're as tight as you can possibly be. I'm gonna say you're lying and you can probably be tighter, and I'm even gonna say that myself would be the same exact way. I will say, however, when you do get in the pattern of constantly being ready to be as tight as possible, you get used to it, and then you develop the next level of tightness, you get used to that, and it just kind of progresses up where you get used to being under these different kinds of pressure. But that's it, I feel like I'm about to start rambling, so I'll end the video here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the channel. Hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope to see you guys all in another video. I'll see you guys. What the?